the video from here. And this is one of the most uh, intense uh, debate we have had. And it's important because I think the DAP is at a crossroad. After 50 years, as I just very much mentioned just now, we are going we to believe everything that we hear about from the posters. But we have the case seriously. I'm nice, uh, three months. We have heard about uh, the polling position of uh, PKR, DAB, and Amana. And I'm about the position of the, if they had in a poll, when the DAB was in all three months. But with the poll of a, of a standing among the Chinese, Malays, and Indians in the early months of the DAB. I'm not three months, all right, three months of DAB was formed. What would have been the poll? How many percent were there among the Malays? How many percent were there among the Indians? How many percent were there among the, the Chinese and others? It would be very, very high. We must also uh, uh, give serious attention to polling results. But we must not be a slave to polling results. And if the polling results are adverse, it should be an encouragement for us to prove the polling results wrong. And I think that's why we must be serious about these results. I think uh, there's, a, there's a lot of uh, misunderstanding, I believe, uh, of, of the motion. I was not involved uh, in, in, in the drafting of this motion, but I think if I may, probably I can suggest an amendment to the motion so that there will be less misunderstanding. I think the motion is something about the need to change drama, uh, trust, or the need to change uh, drastically to be a more inclusive party so that the opposition, opposition can be put to tie or something like that. Maybe you want to get a man so that, uh, that the DAP should change, to change drastically in our models of Randy. I don't think anybody ever suggested that we should sacrifice our basic principles for justice, for democracy, for social democracy, for social democracy. Correct? Yes. So that we can move on and uh, to become a more inclusive party in Malaysia, especially Sabah and Sarawak. Include Sabah and Sarawak. So it's not just about Malay, it's about the Iban, it's about the Kazakhstan, it's about so that the, Malay, the DAP can become a party for all Malaysians by all Malaysians. So these two uh, hurdles of let us uh, examine where we are today. When we were about 50 years ago, and I think I'm the only one in this talk that I talk about, the DAP 50 years ago, uh, none of us ever thought about becoming a member of parliament or a assemblyman or even forming a government. We would we be believed in the, our ideals of social democracy, for justice, freedom, for uh, good governance. And for that, why we came together? And of course, the process, we fought the elections, and uh, we reached until today, it is at the stage. Cooperatives, where do we go from here? We, we started as a party for all Malaysians. We never thought about that we are a party for Chinese, for Indians, and uh, at that time, of course, we were focused on Malaysia, but we were a Malaysian. And, and, we, and, 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 and later, we became the first 10 Malaysian party in Sabah, operating in Sabah and in Sarawak. But, uh, and it was why, in the four by elections that we contested, before the 1969 general elections, we went into armed strongholds. If we are a Chinese party, these are uh, by elections we would never, never have contested. We stood in the first by election that we contested was Kampong Baru. Imagine Kampong Baru for Lombo contested. <laughs> and the candidate, the unknown candidate, Razali, who became the Antipa Sa of Selanu and MD2, the brother in law of Mahate. The second by election we contested was Kampoy. Dai Brani was our candidate. And the third by election was Sulama Utara. The Amno candidate was Musaita, who had been on to become the deputy prime minister. 
So we were not afraid to, to contest in other seats because we believe in fighting and winning the hearts and minds of all nations. And that was why that's the beginning of the 1969 general elections. We contested. We had Malay candidates in parliamentary and state assemblies. One, and we won. One in Perak, uh, in Brasini, and uh, another one in uh, in Negesmelan, in Sirosa, uh, in Sirosa. And that's always been our, our creed, our belief, our mission, and our vision that we are a for all Malaysians. But it was, it was not easy. We had difficulties, we were demonized, we were attacked. But these are, pro these are the problems that we face in Malaysia. In Malaysia the dominance was the politics of race. Question of the political relation along racial lines. Second, the politics of religion. The politics of class was a poor third. And that was why Party Rakyat in Malaysia never made any electoral impact, despite the fact that well, led primarily by many electors, but we had to make an impact. Yes. Even now, 50 years, we are still around. In, in the early 60s, that's why I, I started by saying that if it had been a, a, a poll in the 60s, what would they, what would be the result? Let's say among the Chinese, Chinese voters, I don't think it would be very high. Would it? Today, it's about, I don't know, 85%, 90%. And in the 1960s, probably it would be about the 20%, 15%, 20%. But we believe in our mission, we soldier on, we struggle on, we spread on. <laughs> so that's what we are. We are believed to be a party for and by all Malaysians. Today, we are in a very critical juncture. Where do we, where do we go from here? We are satisfied what we are, we are today. <coughs> and not only in urban areas, we are, we are the established party, the party. We are the country's second biggest party. We are the party yeah. in the urban areas. Is there what we, we want in the, in the urban areas, whether in Peninsula Malaysia, in Sabah, or in Sabah? Is that what we want? Are we content with that? Is that our political mission? Is that what we are in the DAP for? We are for Malaysia, for all Malaysians. Yeah. That's why we must be able to reach out to win the support of only of the Chinese, of the Indians, of the Malays, the Iban, and the Qatar. That is our responsibility. That is our job. <laughs> Otherwise, we are already in people. To be, to be champion for Malay, of the Chinese Malay, of the Indians? No. We believe that this is a Malaysian country. We want to better Malaysia and that we have our responsibility to do so. Oh, nice. And how do you look like that? I agree with, that, uh, with some of the speakers who felt that we should continue to soldier up alone. But well, we must face reality. Like it or not, we have our own limitations. Limitations in uh, how we function, not in terms of our our ideology and our beliefs. Our beliefs is for all reasons, but in terms of uh, practicality, we are limited in the early years. Not Malays. We have to reach out to the Malays, to the Kazakhstans, to the Dayak, to the Arabasi. And it, it's not something that we are doing it now. And the, the primary reason why I went down to Grand Patak, I moved from Epo Timur to Grand Patak because of that belief. They want to move out and reach out. Move out and reach out to all the It was a risk. I don't know whether I was going to win. A lot of people thought it was a very foolish mistake. But I think that's what we are in, DAP and in Malaysian politics. What we must reach out. And luckily, I went to Gulag because I survived. <laughs> but that wasn't the end of that journey. That was only the beginning of, the, of our second journey, of the Malaysian dream. That, that's where from there I was born. 
impian Malaysia, impian sama, impian sama, impian kerana impian kita ada, impian kita impian kau. That is our second stage. And this is this impian uh, process was post two zero one three. And then of course I spoke to people to see a change. Failed to materialize in 2013 general election because of the actions process which were not a just, democratic, and fair. Najib, despite getting 43%, 7% of the votes, about 60% of the parliamentary seats, and continued as a minority prime minister. Then Pakatan uh, Rakyat dissolved, and here we are today. In the last lecture, Parti Amanah was formed and Parti Harapan was formed. And you we are able to register new hopes. That is as far as the larger Parti Harapan is concerned. But what about the AP? What? Considering that our vision has always been a party for all Malaysians, you want to be a party that all Malaysians, regardless of race and religion, or region, can look up for to. That continues to our to be our uh, our dream and our objective, but the reality is at present, at least for the foreseeable future, the DAP will not be able on its own to form the federal government. Not even the city government. I mean, we have you have to be a coalition, a coalition of the opposition present versus the Barisan Amnolet Barisan National Coalition, and in a way that may be. Because I, th I think it's very important that the, what Tim uh, Hwai mentioned, we should not fall into a position, a, a trap, to, be, to allow the unknown propagandists to present the battle as unknown versus DAP. Because it's so easy for them to say it's therefore a battle between the Malays and the Chinese. It's not a battle between the Malays and the Chinese. It's quite all the talk about if uh, next election is unknown versus, not versus, the Malays will lose political power. DAP will, the Chinese will get political power, which is of course untrue, basis, but it is that it's a powerful uh, political uh, uh, propaganda. We must somehow be able to debunk and break this, these lies and falsehoods. How do we do it? How do we do it? How do we prevent Najib from Deflecting all these attacks on him for corruption, abuses of power, nation building uh, policy failures, by turning the whole issue into a, to a communal, communal and religious warfare between the, the Muslims versus the non Muslims, the Malays, the Chinese, in particular, the Malays versus the Chinese. And that's why it's important that the AP must, must continue with our. our, our, our our mission to transform ourselves into a, a Malaysian party accepted by all racial groups in the country. We will we'll continue. The question of uh, compromising or setting out of uh, our basic beliefs and ideals doesn't arise. But I think we must change our modus operandi. Impian, we have tried. Impian uh, uh, projects, but that's not, not good enough. We must double up, we must uh, S intensify, we must do more, do more than all the other time, we must change, we must change drastically our modus operandi. We, have, we tend to fall into the trap of those who want to pigeonhole us into this communal uh, uh, slots. I want to be frank, I'm quite critical. We found the trap in Penatera. For two elections, we didn't put up any Malay candidates because uh, well, this will uh, offend our friends and family in the past. They think that we will try to compete and uh, uh, position for the enemy's post. So we try to be friendly. I think that was a mistake. I told me, I told me, uh, my views, the very strong views on the matter, and I don't think we should uh, make those mistakes anymore. Same thing, what we are doing, 
from uh, Johor or Malang. They feel that the, the DAP should not feel any many headaches in the state assembly seats, in particular in Johor, because they thought that they are threatened. They feel that we will definitely lead to what otherwise will be their battlegrounds. We must cooperate with Mahamna, we must cooperate with PKR, we must be a success of uh, Bagatan Harapan, because there must the coalition, coalition politics, at least for the next 10, 20 years maybe, at least next 10 years, is the political future, back in the mouth, before the DPP can on our own operate singly. It must be a way of the coalition there, but we must be able to continue with our mission to conform we have set out to do to be a fully Malaysian party. We must work with the, the other two political parties in the Pakatan Harapan, but we must not depend solely on them. We will cooperate with PKR, we will cooperate with the Amana, but we must also operate on our own, so that on our own we can become a truly Malaysian party. <laughs> and that's important. And of course, that will set on some talks here and there. But uh, there is something we have to begin to try. The first step is going to come in Sarawak, and uh, Berak, uh, the, uh, Sarawak, the elections uh, in the next uh, uh, two months, whether we can uh, somehow avoid, somehow uh, uh, keep the promise that we uh, announced to all Malaysians, the Pakatan Harapan declarations that there will be a one-to-one -one, uh, contest, it's not going to be easy, it's going to be very difficult. It is now anyway being handled by uh, Sarawak uh, DAP, Tomit uh, Zenran. But for the larger picture, we must endeavour, somehow endeavour, to, to present not only to the people of Sarawak, the people of Malaysia, of Pakatan and Harapan City. How it is going to be done, can, can it be achieved or not? I think uh, we have to we have to try and wait and see. Because otherwise, it will be a great disappointment to the people of Malaysia. And I think after the shocking experience of, uh, night, of uh, after 2013, where the people are very disappointed because of the death of the Pakatan uh, Rakyat, I'm not, sure, I'm not very sure that uh, another shock of this nature, the end, the immediate end of Pakatan Harapan, is going to be uh, good for the country. Good for us in particular, in terms of uh, toppling uh, Najib and uh, Amno led uh, Basri National Government. I think what's important is how do we operate from here? Where do we go from here? How do we change drastically our modus operandi? This is something which I think all the states, uh, leaders, uh, state leaderships must, uh, they must discuss. In greater detail and to consider ways and means which we have, we have never done before in the, in the next two and, a half, two and a half years. In a way, my tour of the country as a result of six months suspension on the uh, the, on, on the, the MANA 2.6 billion the ringgit the movement, I think can be used as a an opportunity to reach out into all the into areas that we have not reach out as yet. As I said, I hope to, to, to visit more than 150 constituencies, parliamentary constituencies, or 222 parliamentary constituencies by the time I return to parliament sometime in June. And I hope all of you can help out. All the states all the, uh, 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 can help in terms of uh, uh, drawing up such programs and come along because that will be a, a useful way to reach out to areas that we have not been able to, to, do, to do so in the past. But you must be aware of these attacks that are going to come. You must, you must be very sensitive to attacks that uh, we are a Chinese party, that we are a evangelical party. There was this talk about the that, that, he, that, that, that there was a meeting in the Penang to formulate the objective of Christian Malaysia. There are people who like to, who like to picture the DAP as an identical party. There is a new book, signed 
Nila Utama and the Lion of Judah, which is a, a very serious and uh, wicked attack. That there is a conspiracy in the country to evangelize uh, Malaysia, and the DAP somehow is part of it. Guanin uh, is also mentioned, the Anna is also mentioned, the Resa is also mentioned, which is of course untrue. But this is something which can become a border for the Amal Brokandis uh, in order to, de to demonize the DAP, to heighten the Malays, to picture this is a, a battle of uh, Malays versus the Chinese and the Muslims versus the evangelical Christians. It's not true, but how do we debunk these lies? I have been a victim of uh, many of these lies uh, in the last 50 years. Starting with the May 13th uh, riots, where I was accused of being responsible for the May 13th riots, leading uh, street demonstrations in Colombo, making anti Malay and anti Islam uh, uh, evidence and abuses, where I was never in Colombo, I was in uh, Sabah. And of course, after that, there were all these. Uh, uh, the latest was the Israeli allegation that uh, about 2 billion offer by Israel in return for a naval base in Pakistan. Why they want to have a naval base you know, in Pakistan, I still cannot understand. But such lies and falsehoods are very, very uh, powerful. And how do we debunk it? How do we uh, uh, break it? There is a new word in the world of politics. A new word in the world of politics, uh, in the world of uh, uh, this intermediation this intermediation what's the meaning of that intermediary this intermediation the dumping of the middleman as a at the age of internet in the internet era the dumping of the middleman not only not only in the, the age of in the era in, in, in the uh, in commerce in the industry but also in politics. When you dump the middlemen in politics, and who are these middlemen? They will include the party, political parties, the press, posters, those who take polls, posters, political parties, and the end, we reach directly, directly with the people. Because we do not depend on the we do not depend on the uh, on the media. We do not depend on opinion polls. We do not have to depend on even political parties. And that's why we must try to reach out to the three million Amal members. We must try to reach out to the one million past members. How do you do that? Because I believe they, the three million Amal members don't support what Marti is trying to do with regard to the the. the Two mega, the three mega scandals, 2.6 billion ringgit, and the one MDB scandal. I don't believe that the one million uh, past members are for Hadi in this uh, so called teaming up with, uh, with Najib and uh, on the ground using uh, Malay unity and uh, Muslim unity in order to justify corruption and the abuses of power. So, how do we bring about this process of this? Intermediation in Malaysia, in the age of internet, that is possible. So these are things, these are the new challenges that we have to face, but there's a hard and solid work to go down to the people to meet, to the rural areas, to meet uh, in the peninsula, the Malay people, the Iban people, the Kadazan people in Sarawak and Sabah. This, the question is, the details of this Moses of Burundi. Of course, we can all say this is all very hard work. We are what we are today. People either they accept it, take it or leave it. We, we believe in a, a social democ democratic Malaysia, we believe in justice, democracy. It's very clear. We are, our principles are, uh, have been very well proclaimed. Either whether the Malays or the Ivans or Katazans accept it or they take it or leave it. I don't think so. I don't think we can take such an attitude because. Otherwise, uh, we'll be 
you know, you're running away from all the responsibilities. You must, I mean, one, one must be aware that in our country today, a plural society, there are Chinese who are living completely in the Chinese world. There are Malays who live completely in the Malay world. There are Indians who completely live in the Indian world. The same thing with Kazakhs and Iwans. And it's our job to reach them, to for them to see a larger Malaysian picture. You must dare to do such, dare to do such uh, a mission. If we, assuming that 80%, 90% of the Chinese support the DAP, now have hope in the DAP, it does not mean that 80 90% of the Chinese share the Malaysian dream. They live in the Chinese, there will be a portion of them who live completely in the Chinese world. Because they have no contact, have no larger picture of a Malaysian vision. It is our responsibility as their political leaders, people who they have political trust, to lead them from just, if they are purely Chinese world, to see a Malaysian old and Malaysian perspective that applies to those Indians living in the Indian world, Malays living solely in the Malay world, Kazakhs and Nepans, isn't it? Are we prepared for such a challenge to reach out to them? It's not easy. It's going to be difficult. It may, it may, even, it may even fail. But if we do nothing, are we going to succeed? If we, are we just content what we are today? Are we going to succeed? Just be content with the... Even if we reach the scene in the normally many sectors in the country, in Sabah, in Sarawak, in Greenstone Are we going to succeed? Are we going to continue forever and ever to be able to hold the support of what we have today? Don't forget, they support us because they believe we can lead them to a better Malaysia. And we cannot, cannot lead them to a better Malaysia unless we are part of a coalition to be able to rule and formulate and implement policies for the whole country. Correct? If we continue to be opposition, there's no guarantee that in the 15th general election, we will be able to even to hold our ground. We may be able to hold our ground for the 14th general election, but not in the 15th general election. So, so I put to you that the right, very critical stage, you must dare to reach out, you must dare to make Malaysia, make that to transform the DAP not only in terms of uh, vision and ideal, but in terms of uh, a reality, a party, the support of all Malaysia, including Malaysia, Iman, and Kadakas. And I think that's what this debate is about. There's no, there's no intention, no talk, no idea, nobody is ever suggesting that we betray or compromise or sell our principles and ideals and objectives. So I think uh, that's important. And if it is accepted, uh, then I think uh, with those amendments uh, to the resolution that uh, drastically means the motors are friendly and uh, in Malaysia, especially Sabah and Sarawak. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Okay, now we're going to open up uh, just for three people uh, to share.